Hey coin collectors and welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel and today it's going to be some Roosevelt Dimes from 1992. If you want to get a really valuable 1992 dime you have to go way up in terms of quality and here's one of them here. This You see this is at the PCGS website. It's a regular strike Philadelphia. We get down here and you see that it's a uh, 67 full bands and you can actually see the full bands on this and when you're talking about the full bands we're going to look at the down ones but we're also going to look at these ones across and those are going to be huge and then down here you'll see that one of them actually sold in 2012 for 1610 dollars so the philadelphia has some hugely valuable ones but it has to be in really really good condition and it turns out that since 2012 they've got some mint state 68s and PCGS has now graded three of them at about fourteen fifty. And NGC actually graded a Mint State sixty nine. So who knows what that's worth? But certainly over fifteen hundred dollars if it's a actually a full Mint State sixty nine. The Denver Mint PCGS also has some really highly graded uh, coins. And this one here, you see, it's a Mint State sixty seven full bands. One sold at auction for $425, but let's see if they found anything since. And so what we do is we go down and we look over here and we see that not only have they found uh, a higher level one, a 67 plus, which PCGS says is now worth $750, but again, NGC has graded one at Mint State 68, which would be worth something over $750. Uh, in current values, probably well over a thousand dollars. There are two versions of this San Francisco mint coin, and this is the <clears throat> just the regular S version. There's a silver version, and there's a clad version, and this is the clad version. And you see, uh, for the San Francisco mint proof 70 deep cameo, one did sell for $299 in 2003, but here's the problem since then, they have found. over 1400 they have graded over 1400 of PCGS at proof 70 deep cameo and now PCGS says they're worth about $20 so the best possible dime you can get from 1992 you can, you should be able to get it for somewhere in the $20 range and then the silver version is not much more valuable even though it's got a couple bucks well it's got almost two bucks worth of silver in it we look down here one did sell for $564 in 2004 but guess what same with the silver since then they have had they've graded 1400 PCGS that are proof 70 deep cameo silver dimes from 1992 and those go for about $25 so only five bucks more for the best silver dime so if you want to get some dimes you want to get the best you can possibly get 1992 is a great year Let's take a look at these dimes that we have and just walk our walk our way through all the differences in them. It says Liberty in front of Roosevelt, in God we trust under his chin. And then when you get right here, there's a P, and underneath that's a 1992, and then down there there's a J and an S. The J and an S here right underneath Roosevelt's neck is for John Sinek. He was the engraver of these coins. And then the 1992, which is the date, and the P is for the Philadelphia Mint, where in 1992, they made 593.5 million of these. This one behind it, of course, is from the Denver Mint. When we look at this one from the De Denver Mint, we see it says, at Liberty in front of Roosevelt, and God we trust under his chin again, uh, and D for Denver. And the Denver Mint, they made 616 million of these. So these are from the uncirculated mint sets, and you could probably tell that right up front, right? This is one from just a regular circulation. It doesn't have the same shine on it. it these, these ones are somewhat polished in the sense that they were polished when they came out of the uh, mint, but they're not polished in the sense that uh, they stick up off the coin like a proof set would. This one came from the mint it's uncirculated this one here from the circulating philadelphia one is all dinged up and one of the things you'll find when you look on the back of these used dimes is that there are two sets of bands on here and that's let's look at this so there's a double band here and a double band here and then at the bottom there's a little cup almost like the holder for the torch down here where you're 
almost like a bat handle, it, it, it turns out. On the left there is uh, an olive branch, and there's a couple olives there. On the right there is an oak sprig, and uh, there's an acorn right there. At the top of the coin it says, United States of America, it kind of surrounds it. Here, across the middle, E Pluribus Unum. I know these are, are broke up, but it's just the E Pluribus Unum split by the um, Finna Oak. And then down here it says one dime. And as I said, it's a copper nickel and it's also a rimmed coin. Well, when we look at this coin in comparison to this coin, we can kind of see what I'm talking about when I talk about the bands. At the top, you see that the bands are fully split apart. Let me tip it right like that. And you can see a separation all the way across the bands here. The bottom set of bands, unfortunately, we don't see that kind of separation there. Let's turn this one off. And uh, because we don't see that separation there, this will not be what they would call a fold bands version. NGC and PCGS rate these coins. And the PCGS designation for full bands, if it's MS60 or better, has to have full separation between the bands, which this one does, the upper and lower. And this one does not have the full separation that we can see. And the coin must also show no significant cuts across the band. So you can't have a line that cuts all the way down through both bands. This one, uh, there's no cuts that do that, but you just don't have the separation. So that's our Denver Mint coin. Let's look at the back of the Philadelphia Mint coin. And again, we see that we can get some good separation in the bands here. Um, this is much more scratched up, even though it's a uncirculated coin. that They just get scratched up at the mint. And then down here we see almost no uh, separation in the band. So for these coins, these would not be the full bands version. And it turns out in 1992, there are plenty of these coins around that are in pretty good shape. So even though these might be as high as MS-65, even in MS-65, you're only talking about maybe $4. And these uh, two, probably not even that. They made 1.2 billion, remember, of these two. And there are plenty of uh, coins in this shape. There's one other, uh, two other ways you can get this coin. One is in what's called a prestige set, which has a, an Olympic half dollar in it. Those are have a different gloss on them altogether. The other is in just a regular S set. So this one right here, there we go. Here's a 1992 in the, and this is probably worth about $4. Let's look at the back of this one and see if the S for the San Francisco Mint has uh, any better bands than the uncirculated coins do. And look at that. That is just, if you had this in a P or a D, you'd be in really great shape. And look at the separation here. Um, it's, uh, my lighting is not the best, but you can really see a separation that goes almost, it pretty much goes all the way across there. So the separation goes all the way across in that one. This one is really good where it separates all the way across. And so this is be pretty close to a full bands version because it's an S coin that changes the calculation completely because this coin was specially made, specially polished and put in a special set. So the full bands are not as expensive. In fact, this may only be worth uh, four to five dollars, even in this shape that it's in. These coins were sold for eleven dollars. So you can get this whole set for under eleven. So that's kind of a weird thing. All right. Well, that's all we have today from the DC coin world for the Roosevelt Dimes. Have a great day. Leave any comments you might have in the comments section.